I've wandered around Searching for fulfillment But I finally found a place My place, oh In a world of religious corruption and perverted teachings, the wisdom to navigate through life is necessary. That is what God has given his servant, Pastor Israel Onashile, the senior pastor of the City of Refuge Ministries, Quorum Assembly. Quorum Assembly, a place where God is raising heaven-bound, prosperous people. Here comes Pastor Israel. The man feed they look for plasterer. So if we introduce architects and they like our plastering work, architect will give us the job. So they said, architect, they here. And he said, I like what you people are doing here. Here is my business card. Come and see me because I want to design some houses. True story, I'm telling you. And then the architect went to see him on the Monday. The man is an allergy. He has... 11 wives so he decided to build a mini estate in his village 12 houses he wants one for himself and one for the wives he says i've acquired the land in my village i need you to design 12 houses all of them same the man came back in a couple of days here is my design the man, hey, I've been preaching diligence to you guys, right? I've been preaching diligence. Go and sketch a house. The man didn't bring a sketch. He brought a design. And he brought a mini 3D. 3D. They didn't send him to design. Talk less of 3D. He designed, he took 3D to the Alaji. Alaji looked at it and said, it's beautiful, I like it. I want it. Oh yeah, go and design 12 of them. How much will this design cost me? The man didn't want to be too expensive. 12 houses. He said 2 million. He said 2 million. Okay, no problem. Give me your account number. On the spot, he received an alert of 2 million. This is a man that collects 3K, 5K. He won't faint. When he saw, why he is there? He's not met the man before. Two million. He finished his design, brought it. Elijah said, I like it. Okay. You are starting next week. How much will everything cost? He told him. Okay. How should we start? Should I give you half? And when you get far, I'll pay you the other half. I know ah, half will be too much. The person who wanted to faint for two million, you can imagine. He said, no, let's just collect one quarter. Then we will be doing it small, small. Elijah looked at him. I don't want you to be stranded. And wired 500 million. True, true story to him. The, the guy, if he run away, oh. she wired 500 million. Go and start. Some of you are looking at me like, can God do that? Mm -mm, it was devil who did it. For me. We were like them that dream. He built, while he was building, he was cutting. He doesn't have, he can't rent. I can they give you three thousand, five thousand. How can you rent? He is living with a friend. So when he came to Abuja to see Elijah, Elijah said, Okay, where are you? So you don't delay me. Let me come and meet you. He came, he see the area, it's a shanty. My own architect living in a shanty like this. I say, No, God forbid. Come and see me in the office tomorrow. He went there. I'm telling you a story that me too, they look like this. And the allergy gave him paper of a land. 1,000 square meter. In a police settlement here. See? Take. I dash you the land. You are my architect. You can't be living there. 
and wired 40 million to him. Dash, build your own house. Jaira, you are in love. Sing that song. Die. You are enough. I rule you. You are enough. Yeah. I will be content. I will be content. Every single day. Every single day. Oh Lord, you are. Oh Lord, no, no, no. Amen. So, 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 when I share my story with you, now you know my story is just a child's game. My story now becomes like a toy. God is coming for you. Oh, that's the poorest faith I've ever seen. I say, God is coming for you. Hold it. How do you want the prophecy to look like? That I come and tell you the color of your fa family house in the village. Is that what is prophecy? Huh. I prophesy on you. I say, God is coming for you. For me. Yeah, yeah. Father, come for your children. You Be Jehovah chariot to us. Be Jehovah chariot to us. For me, Lord, we believe you, Daddy. You're more than enough. We believe you, Daddy. We believe you, Daddy. If you believe, lift your hand, lift your hand, and say, I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive, I receive, I receive. I receive. You can do anything, I receive. Enough for me. Everybody sing, you're more than enough, you say. You're more than enough for me. Everybody sing, God, you're more than enough. More than enough for me. Jesus, you were more. Jesus, you were more. You're my person, God. More than enough for me. Jesus, you're my person, Lord. Yeah. Who will try? Who needs to win the team? Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. I don't know why I heard the story. I don't know why my architect friend told me that story yesterday night. But I think I'm supposed to tell somebody that God can show up any day, any time. Just be faithful. Be faithful. May God lead you to be at the right place in the right time. That's all you need to be at the right place in the right time. See, look at me, look at me. I'm, I am a developer today because I came to Abuja at the right time. I, I didn't come to be a developer. I came to visit my mom. She's late now, but I said, let me come to Nigeria, visit my mom as a custom every year. But if I miss one year, I don't miss the second year. And because I had missed the previous year, I said, I must go this year. You will have a hodge inside, something pushing you. Do it now. Go now. Don't go next year. Go now. That's how it works. That's how God works. Then I found myself here on holiday. Amen. He can do anything. You can do anything. I told you my story and this guy's story to let you see resemblance. To lift somebody from gutter to the utmost does not take him more than a click. You 
in his heart, so is he. Start thinking like a mortar. Start thinking like a mortar. You will have your expectation come to pass. There's somebody here. You are a makeup artist, right? But Tara was also a makeup artist. But a millionaire one. That's an architect, a millionaire one. I'm just a screeder, a millionaire one. There isn't anything impossible for our father. Worship him in expectation. In expectation. In, in, in expectation. Worship him in expectation. Worship him because the Bible says, I wish above all things that thou may have prosper and be good. Hey. Worship him in expectation. I am prosperous. I am prosperous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Welcome the person right next to you, to your right and left. Say you're welcome to Korem Assembly. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. You know, because of our billboard, I get different questions every week. So, I, I brought another question that came. You know, last week, the question was, should I stop tight? We answer that. And every week, different question comes. And the question this week is, Pastor, why are you against Titan? Ask this week's question. Last week it was, Pastor, should I? No, you can see that's, that person is from the right hand side. The person heard my messages and felt, ah, let me ask man of God, should I stop tithing? We answer that. If, if you didn't get the answer to that, go and see media. And I must confess, the media, they're not doing fantastic job. Media, you are not doing fantastic job. Somebody said he came to collect the video of the message, something like that, to share with his friend. But thank God he watched it first. He said, all the important things pastor said, they're not there. So I didn't bother to give my friend. Because I have a reason for wanting them to listen. He said, all the places, I said, put the camera in my face. He said, for pastors to say, put the camera in my face, it must be important. They cut all of that out of the video. I don't know which video the person is talking about, whether it's the video on ITV. No, it can't be because the person said, I wanted to give my friend. So it's a video you, you guys edited and gave out. Media, are you hearing me? Are you guys hearing me? I don't know what you guys gave out, but you need spirit of discernment to edit. If I say, put it in my face, I want it in the video. And if I say, cut that out, it's for in-house only. Before they accuse me of hatred. If it's important, leave it there. The, the, the man said they have edited every juice out of the video. You know meaning of juice? Yes, sir. The cocoa? Yeah. Media. They said you have edited all the juice out of the message. The man said they listened to the message. It's not the same message again. So I didn't give it out. I pray and I am praying you have the original video because you are going to have to re-edit that video. Or you give the man as it is. 
I don't know the man, but please go back to media and request. If you are in service, go and request the original. If you are online and you are watching now live, go and request for the original, please. Please, please, give the man the original. Hallelujah. So I answered the question last week. I don't know whether you have edited out the answer. <laughs> I don't know what you guys did. I'll have to see the original myself so that I know what and what is missing. But let's deal with today's question. So the other question is, Pastor, why are you against Titan? And I, I really need to answer it because it might not be the person that asks me alone. It might just be viewers. It might just be listeners or people who go on Facebook. Why is this pastor against Titus? So I'm, I'm going to give an answer. You'll be surprised. That's today's message. Yes. I, I'm, Bible says you must have an answer for everyone who comes to you. For why you do what you do. It's a Bible command. So I'm obeying the command. I have an answer. So my first answer is this. I am not against tithing. That's the first answer. I am against making tithing an obligation. Two different things. I am against presenting tithing as an obligation. The Bible spoke of us making the cross of Christ of no effect. So when you preach any message, whether tithing, I don't care what the message is, any message you preach that makes the cross of Christ of little or no effect is a wrong doctrine. Can I say that again? Any message you preach, whether tithing or not tithing, if that message makes the cross of Christ of no effect, it is wrong doctrine. So I am not preaching against tithing, I'm preaching against the tithe that makes the cross of Christ little or no effect, because it's a wrong doctrine. And the day I really got mad at that doctrine was the day I heard a man of God said, if you don't tithe, you will go to hell. Then it has made the cross of Christ of no effect. So I have the right to be angry. Because Paul said, I do not want to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. So, yes, I preach against tightening of obligation because it reduces the effect of the cross. I said on Thursday, the only ground you are going to heaven is the cross of Christ. Nothing else. Not because you stop smoking. Ibo, not because you stop committing adultery. Not because you stop stealing. That's not the reason you are going to heaven. You are going to heaven because of the blood of the cross. So when a man of God, and I am really disappointed that a man of God who you would expect knows the Bible from cover to cover and knows the new covenant inside out would say, if you don't tithe, you will go to hell. Then your doctrine is fundamentally flawed. Flawed. I would not want to sit down and sit under your teaching if you make such a pronouncement. I would not want to. How can you ridicule the blood of the cross and equate any law, including tithing, with the blood of the cross? It's an insult. 
to God. It's an insult to a precious blood that you will never see its kind again. It's an insult. So that was when, I'm answering that question, that was the day I got mad and I started preaching against, listen to me, I preach against tithing of obligation. There's a difference. We preach against tithing of obligation. Why? Because it can send people to hell. Oh, you don't know? Let me explain how tithing of obligation can send people to hell. When your focuses shift away from the blood of the cross to anything, you are falling from the grace. You will be like the Pharisees who says, I fast every week and I pay my tithe always. I'm going to heaven. You are on your way to hell already. Do you get it now? The day anything is your ground. Okay, let, me, let me say the one that will shock you. The day I have stopped stealing is your ground for going to heaven. You are on your way to hell. Let's call a spade a spade. Is it good to steal? No. Should we steal? No. But should you put your confidence of going to heaven in the ground that I no longer steal, you are on your way to hell. Because your focus has shifted from the blood of the cross. You have made the blood of no effect. So anything can make the blood of zero effect. Anything. Even holiness can make the blood of low effect. So don't think I am preaching just against tithing of obligation. I'm preaching against anything that takes your focus away, that takes your confidence away, that takes your conviction of going to heaven away from the blood of the cross. Anything that does that is a wrong doctrine. And I, Pastor Israel, I am against such doctrine. And likewise, is Apostle Paul against such doctrine. And if he says, follow me as I follow Christ, I am following Paul all the way. I am. But I don't care your title. Archbishop, bishop, prophet, G.O. Papa. Whatever your title is, if your message is undermine the blood of the cross, you are not God. I choose to follow God. And media better not edit that part. Because I mentioned Titus. I mentioned it for a reason. It's not pride. It's not pride. Your title does not matter. This is what matters. If you have big title and you are preaching against this word, we are not following you. Because the Bible did not say follow a bishop. Say follow me as I follow Christ. That's all. And that's the only follow me in the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. The people the people who made tithing look like an obligation. I'm going to say this. They are selfish. And I'm going to tell you why they are selfish. I used to think it was a mistake. I used to think it was an error. I used to think they don't know better. Then, this is going to shock some of you. Because you will wonder which Holy Ghost I have. Then the Holy Spirit told me, no, they know better. It is done deliberately. And I'm going to show you. I'm telling you, Holy Spirit told me, unless it's devil that told me. I heard a voice tell me, it's not mistake, it's not error. They know better. 
but they present tithing of obligation as something so crucial and because they need that money from you that 10% is very important they now had to preach it for you to feel guilty and the day you don't pay it you owe God anybody who preaches it to the point that you feel guilty he knows what he's doing he knows let's say it in a way that pinch them you want to you want to you want to be rich no problem i don't have a problem for you to be rich as a pastor you want to be rich yes be rich but do not deceive people your judgment awaits you for deceiving people. I don't care if your anointing is dripping so much that wherever you pass through, if people pass through it, they fall under the anointing. Your judgment awaits you. We have to speak the truth. And, and to make you feel guilty, they said to you, Tithing is not law. Pastor Bright, they know you are going to reject it. Brother Mike, they know you are going to be against it if they come and say, obey the law. You're going to say, no, I'm not under the law. They know you are going to fight that you are under grace. So they don't come to you with lefticos. They don't come to you with numbers. They don't come to you with Deuteronomy 14. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. So they come to you from the angle of it's not law. So they present it as we're doing something that is outside law of Moses. Okay? True of us. It's presented, Abi, that we're doing something outside the law of Moses. This is not law. So now it has to be presented and proven to be an act outside law. And to do that is difficult. So you now know it is deliberate because of the angles from where they come you want to tell somebody a lie you know if you go this way they will catch you so you use this route but you still know your goal you want them to feel watch this they want you to feel obliged they want you to feel you are breaking a covenant if you don't pay which covenant are you breaking you say it's not law, right? Something that is not law. And yet you feel, I have broken a covenant. Anything that you feel guilty you have broken is law. <clears throat> Are you here? I say anything you feel guilty. Okay, you are driving past. You see amber. Then you say, I can beat this. And you speed through, but by the time you get, got there, it became red. Correct? But you cannot match the brake anymore. It looks crazy. So you... Psh. Do you know, your mind will be telling you, I pray road safety is not ahead. Yes. That means you already feel guilty because it's a law. Anything you do that you feel guilty for, for breaking it, is a law. Anything. Ah, they said don't drop liters here. That's a law. And you drop liter unconsciously. Try your your heart go cut. I pray Amak people are not here. 13,000. That's a law. Anything that you do or don't do that makes you feel guilty is a law. So how then did they manage to preach to us and make us feel we are robbing God or breaking a covenant if it has not been presented as a rule, obligation, or law? How do you do that? Let me show you how they did that. Very smart people. 
very smart men of God, they did that by focusing on two people, Abraham and Jesus. They focus on Abraham to say Abraham was not under the law and he did it. Fair enough. He was not under the law and he did it. How does that now translate to being a law to me? I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody. They use two examples. This is the implication. If the act of Abraham now infers, if the act of Abraham now makes you feel there is a rule here, rather than there is a good example here, you now have an obligation, rule, or law. So you're saying Abraham was Abraham tightened before the law. Kudos. It's true. Genesis 14. He tightened before the law. You are not lying. This is where you became crafty. Oh man of God. Abraham tightened before the law. I agree. How does that translate to me being guilty when I don't do what Abraham did? If I feel guilty for not doing what Abraham did, somebody has made me feel there is a rule, there is an obligation to do what Abraham did. And I did not find Jesus making reference, I did not find Paul or Peter making reference to us doing what Abraham did. Yes, man of God, Abraham tightened before the law. I can do what Abraham did, but it's not compulsory to do what he did. If it's compulsory, it's a law. In a clap for Jesus there. Can we say that again? I can do anything Abraham did. But if I feel guilty, for not doing what Abraham did, it has become a law. It now means I have breached a covenant. A covenant, an ordinance, a law, all mean the same. When you were champion of tithe, the day you didn't tithe, did you feel guilty or not? So much good. He said he felt it so much. Where did that guilt come from? It came from an understanding there's an obligation placed on me to do it. Whenever an obligation is placed on you to do something, it's a law. And whenever you lose money, you will feel it's because you didn't fulfill an obligation. So it's a law. Who managed to convince you? You didn't read it from the Bible. It was indoctrination. You were doctrinated and it was cleverly presented. You, me and Mama, we fought. She was cleverly indoctrinated. I, when I say fight, I, we fought. Hey, hmm. Devorao, Devorao, Obi, we must tight. We must, must, M U S T, compulsory. And I told you, anything that becomes compulsory is a law. So I said to my wife, Shere, becoming, let us analyze this matter together. So, and uh, 
she now happened to find Pastor Bright as a partner. My wife and the pastor gang against the senior pastor. <laughs> Say, so they met and went through Bible together to come and attack that doctrine and floor pastor. Say, hey, hey. So they brought, I, I waited where? Well. They were bringing it one by one. They brought this one. They bring another. The any more? No more. Go and sin no more. <laughs> because you were sinning before. You were sinning before. You anything that you take that replaces the blood of the cross is a sin. Even your holiness can become a sin. Yes, sir. Hey. Your holiness can become a sin. No, we have to speak the truth. Is it not the truth that sets free? It is. So, so they say to you, he did it before law. And I will never argue that he did it during the law. I will be stupid. Genesis 14. Law came in Exodus. So, of course, he did it before the law. Hallelujah. But this is what baffles me. Ow. Please help me. Help me. Maybe I am mad. Maybe I've lost my mind. Help me, Michael. Pastor Bright. Pastor Shego. You guys, help me. Ah, I'm my good friend here. How does not doing what Abraham did constitute me missing heaven? Because it then means if you are a man and your wife cannot give birth and you don't impregnate her maid, you won't go to heaven. You have not done what Abraham did. Let, let me ask the question again. How does me not doing what Abraham did equates missing heaven? How does not practicing anything Abraham did becomes a ground for going to hell. Michael, and it was said by one of the biggest men of God in our country. You want to tell me that man of God made a mistake? And you know the funniest thing? I was not quoting what somebody said. I saw the video, so I copied the video. I kept it for evidence. Until that big man of God repents. We will keep preaching this message. Yes. He has to repent. Nobody is above repentance. And please, you can't repent in your closet. Mm. You have to come out. Yeah. And correct. Yes, yes, One of them came out last week. Somebody came out last week. Okay. Yes. Okay, don't call the name. At least Michael Konkwo repented semi-public. He said it in a garden of small group of people, but somebody recorded it with a phone. I have the video. Michael Konkwo was once PFN president. He said, I'm quoting him, and I can show you the video. Mike said, we even threatened people with Malachi. There is no cause on anybody. Oh. Abel Damina too. Mike Okonkwa. Abel is not picking now. Mike. Uh, let me tell you, hierarchy in Nigeria. Idaosa, Mike. That's the hierarchy in Abi. In Nigeria, when we're talking old school pastors, 
He was already a big name while Idaosa was alive. Why would they make him president? It's like saying, I already said that for. That huge. I heard him. I have the video. If you want, I will give it to you. I just decided I'm not going to be spreading it. He said secretly, and it was recorded. He said, nobody did on that cause. We did it in ignorance. We even threatened people with it. He said, we, he used the word, we even threatened people with it. Nobody did on that cause. You know why you are not on that cause? Christ became a cause. How can you now be under a curse? And a man of God will read Christ became a curse and say you are cursed with a curse. What confusion? Which curse are you cursed with? The one Jesus did not cover. <laughs> oh, help me somebody. I'm, I'm giving you reasons why I preach against tithes of obligation. But in the course of these messages, God will be speaking to you individually. I'm sure by the Holy Spirit, I will touch whatever is on your mind. So today's message can be everywhere. Just be here. But the title, I must give it a title. Why preach? You know, I, let's, say you, you went to church today. Yes. I was message. Great. What did he preach? Uh, uh, so I said, let me give it a title to help you. So if they ask you what I preach, why do you preach against titan that's the title <laughs> but go home with whatever the holy ghost is going to bless you with now watch this then they leave abraham because some knew that it would be wrong to make what abraham did a rule or covenant or obligation you all know we are not under any form of obligation to do what Abraham did, correct? Yes. Come on, talk to me. Yes. You all know there is nowhere, no Old Testament or New, where we are told to do what Abraham did. Although there was a place in John chapter 4 where the Samaritan, the Samaritan woman said, Our father worshipped on this mountain. Now that mountain truly was where Abraham worshipped. It's true. But the Jews said Mount Olive is where we worship. So they didn't do what Abraham did. Oh, Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. Even Jesus didn't worship on that mountain. The Samarian woman was the one telling, oh, thank you, media. They're trying to prove themselves now. <laughs> Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you, Jew, says that it is in Jerusalem, the place where we ought to worship. So there's even an argument of where to worship. Let's worship where Abraham did it. And you say, why is that compulsory? We worship here. So we are seeing that even the Jews, the natural children of God, they didn't see a reason to do what Abraham did. If not, all of you born again people, you must visit, no, not Jerusalem, that particular place, Abraham worshipped. But we know there's no obligation to do what Abraham did. If I, if I tell you the truth, Abraham is the weakest form of knowing God there's some silence Pastor Israel Pastor Israel don't cross line share a lie you, is that not the meaning of that silence Pastor Israel don't cross line a whole father Abraham who is in the bosom of God the Bible records it, Abby, that the, the bosom of Father Abraham, an ordinary common pastor Israel, said that Father Abraham knew God the least. Yes. You know why I'm bold? I am a small man. No argument. I passed this. 
size 15 and a half. Although 15 and a half, don't they me small, small. Can you see? My wife is doing a good job. I, I'm going size 16, small, small. <laughs> Let the hearers understand. You, you, you enter a good boutique, you see a shirt. Yeah, this is the kind of shirt Pastor Israel like. Buy 16. <laughs> Pastor Israel is soliciting for gift. Yes. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> Am I rich enough to buy my own shirt 10 times over? I'm just asking you, you feel you want to bless man of God, by all means do. Does not mean I will not prophesy on you. I would take it because you must not do it for a gift. You must not do it for a prayer. Do it unto the Lord. You heard what Pastor Joel said today. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. So when you are buying me a shirt, I'm honoring God, not man. Some people will give you the shirt and hold it like this. They won't release it. They're waiting for the prayer. Say, say, daughter of Zion, kneel down. You know why they do it? When, when uh, Isaac chop the meat. Ah, see this meat. Kneel down, make I bless you. So people are now waiting. When they buy you a tuxedo and a shirt. If you don't pray for them, they don't go come out. It means you did it for a reason. Transaction. Bill, I said, this man, don't they follow Korem all this while? Transaction, that's what I called it in one of my messages. I said, you are doing business with God. Okay, I must defend why I said what I said. I know I'm a small man, size 15 and a half. Or 15, three quarter. But why would I say Abraham knows God the least? Because God showed up after Abraham. He says, I want to reveal myself to you. Abraham saw angels. Moses saw backside of God. And when Moses was going to die, he said, God is going to raise a prophet like me. He didn't say like Abraham, because Abraham was not a prophet. He's just a patriarch, a founder. Do you know we know more than the people before us? Because the Bible says precept upon precept. How many precepts does Abraham have? So for a long time, it was Moses that has seen then another king and priest combined came on the scene. David is a king and a priest. His precept was now greater than Moses. He can be in his palace and see what's going on in heaven. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord. There are many things David said with his mouth. You'll be wondering, how did he know them? He is knowing more than what Moses knew. Moses did not know anything that was going on in heaven. Nothing. Read all his writings. He didn't know what was going on in heaven. He wrote everything that pertained the nature, nation of Israel on earth only. His knowledge is also limited. Yes. Am I speaking to anybody? Yes, and then came the Ogak of them all. He says, let me show you the Father. Ah! Moses saw the backside of God. David was caught up to heaven and saw what was going on in heaven. And many other things happening there. He said, you shall not allow your bones to see corruption. He was seeing what will happen even when the Lord comes. He, he saw a lot of things. But man, David is learning work. 
he only saw what was revealed to him. Somebody came on the scene. He said, there's only one man who can tell you about heaven. The one who came from heaven. Hey! of them all. I am not telling you what I saw by vision, by dream, by revelation. I am telling you what we were doing. Me and, and my father, we were doing it. Before Abraham was. Hey. So if I said to you, Abraham knew about God the least. I built it. Do you get the point now? So you now feel guilty that you didn't do what? Abraham. Abraham. Listen very well. Abraham. Abraham for that place. That's true. It, it just happened that God has to start with somebody. Abraham was not the object. The object was the blood. But Jesus can't just show up. Bam! I'm child of God. God was taking the world to a destiny. So he started with one man. I will make you father of many nations. Your job is done. Do you know that's all the job of Abraham? I'm starting with you. And your seed shall bring solution to the world. Done. Your job is done. So Abraham begat, Isaac begat, and then begat, and then begat, and go on and go on and go on. When you read, <laughs> read your book, Bible very well, read Matthew. Then you will see how we came from beginning and came, 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 came and landed at Jesus. Because that's the real object. Abraham was never the object. Abraham was just where he started the journey of where he was going. Where he was going is really Jesus coming to die. So that's all Abraham was. The starting man. And there was no place where we have to do what the starting man did. Okay, let's leave that one. Point number two. I said they don't come to you from law. They come to you with do what Abraham did. Which I'm not saying is a sin to do what Abraham did. If you have the gut, like I said last week, you can impregnate your wife's maid. Let's see what your wife will do about it. It's not a sin to do what Abraham did. Would you now do animal sacrifice? Because Abraham did animal sacrifice. They, in fact, almost everything Abraham did, you can't try it now. You can't. But we now pick one thing he did. We pick one thing he did. Say so He did it. And his grandson did it too. Yes. Yes now. Abraham had slaves. You go and have slaves. You can't do everything Abraham did. And most of the things he did, like I said, we can't try it. But the clever men of God pick one thing. And say, he did this one. Let's do it. Fine. I will copy anything good you do. But that something good cannot become law to me. So they, they feel guilty to use the act of Abraham to make you feel sinful if you don't. Do you know nobody can make you feel guilty for not doing what Abraham did? Sure you know. Do you know what they now go to? They go to Jesus in Matthew 23 and say Jesus supported Titan let's see Matthew 23 because I rushed through it last time I didn't teach it but today I want to teach it Matthew 23 at least if we demolish the two grounds by which they make us feel guilty 
guilt will go. Then we can now tithe if we want. Amen? Matthew 23. Let's read verse 23. Now, people use this scripture to say Jesus supports tithing. Watch this. How many people know this is used? Let me see your hand. You know they use this. Okay. Let me prove to you that Jesus wasn't supporting Titan here. How can you support something by first of all saying woe to you? That doesn't look like a support to me, but let's leave that. Woe to you means judgment is coming on you for what you have done. But let's leave that. That's exegesis. They say, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you pay tithe of mint and the rest of them and have neglected the weightier matter of the law, which is justice and mercy and faith. Now, this is where they pick the word of Jesus on. This you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So they say, Jesus said, and truly, Jesus said. It is not what Jesus said that we would just take. What did Jesus mean? Every time Jesus make a statement, his disciple will go to him. What do you mean? Which means you don't, liter you don't take what he says literal. Yes, Jesus said this. And read my lips. This, let's put this. For Titan. So we're going to say it the way Jesus meant it. Titan, you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. I'm even helping them better. We replace this with Titan because Jesus was talking about Titan. Amen. Christian, Titan, you ought to have done. Let's read it again. For you pay tight. Now watch this. Woe to you because you pay tight. Eh? What, what, what's, where's Jesus going? This conversation I'm about to have is judgment be on you. Woe to you. Why did I say judgment be on you? Because you pay tight. I, I, I want to take my time and break it down today. And don't edit this one. Woe to you. Judgment be upon you. Why would you say that? I'm imagining what the Pharisees say. Why would you say that? Because you pay tight of everything. What's wrong with that? Does, is it making sense? I'm trying to paint the picture. We are not there, but let's think. They were not just like this, listening to Jesus like school children. They get, they, took, they get mouth. They are teachers of the law. They challenge Jesus. What says thou? Okay, so why did Moses say? So they respond to Jesus. They are not like school children who put their hand behind their back without uh, responding. So I'm assuming just because the writer didn't put all their response does not mean they were just, I just come to you. I just come to you and I say, judgment be upon you. And you'll just be looking at me. Say, ah, Pastor, why would you say that? Abby? Yes. If I come to you and say, judgment be upon you. Because I'm man of God, you'll say amen. <laughs> man of God, or no answer to fear. <laughs> ah, judgment, okay. God forbid. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't see the Pharisees say, ah, okay. Because of all the miracles we see you do, woe is us. <laughs> no, they can't do that. Say you are, yeah? No. So let us now analyze this matter. Give us that scripture again. And let us demolish the craftiness of men of God using this thing as saying Jesus support. He didn't. But somebody has to break the scripture to say he didn't. Okay. So I'm going to have to act the drama that took place in Jerusalem. So Jesus come. War to you. Judgment be upon you. Ah! Jesus. 
Why would you say that to us? Because you pay tight of everything. And so, the law says we should pay tight. Yes, I know. Tighten you ought to have done without leaving other matters. Are you seeing now? Tighten you ought to have done without leaving other matters. Now remember, what to you? Because you pay all time. Remember he said that. How can you say, what to you because you pay tight? And then say, tighten you ought to have done. He is going somewhere. Let me tell you where he was going. The reason war is to them for Titan is this. They tight and leave other laws because they were not Titan. They picked a law that makes them look important. They like show off. They like outward praise. So if they if you give them 10 bottles of ever water when they're coming to church, they carry one ever butter. Carry another item. Help me now. You buy jota for them. Ten. They carry. If not five, they divide it into two. And carry. With their long clothes. With their long regalia. As they're entering church. Good afternoon, sis. Good afternoon, bro. Well, uh, <laughs> God bless you. Now, 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 watch what is happening. They are practicing the law that makes them look good. Go to verse 28, where Jesus round up this doctrine. Go to verse 28. This is where men of God don't take you to. They don't tell you what Jesus was really trying to deal with. Verse 28, media. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside of you are full of hypocrisy. So you took a law that outwardly makes you look righteous, but the other one that nobody will see, you are full of it. Go back to verse 23. Let's compare the two. He says, you are doing one and not doing the other. You are doing the one that makes you look righteous and the one that nobody else will see. You ignore. Look at it. You neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. And you did only the one that people will praise you. So the man who didn't tithe, who came to temple, say, Chai, I'm a sinner. See that man, ever water, jota, okra, cumin. If they plant a wedu in their compound, if that a wedu produce hundred leaves, they will bring ten. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Serve God very well. I don't know if you understand. As they're bringing the tithe, says, says, you don't want to miss heaven. You don't want to miss heaven. Did you pray this week? Did you fast? I fast last week. I'm going to fast this week. And God helping me, I can't miss my tithe. And you are looking at him from afar. Chai, chai. Ah, chai. So you go to one corner. Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. What made that man say, have mercy on me, a sinner? Because he listened to the catalog of the good things the other man is doing. So he regarded himself a sinner because he did not do anything near what the man did. They are good at outward appearance. They don't pray in their closet. They don't pray in their closet. They don't pray at home. But if we have prayer meeting in church, child, you will have to hit this microphone before they stop praying. You say, ah, that brother that they pray. Now lie, that's the only prayer he prays. <laughs> Outward appearance. Inside their house, they no go pray. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. 
thing you the Pharisees do is for public show yeah. to pray. They say they pray in marketplaces. Let me tell you what they're doing. They're going home. And you know the Bible says that the Jews have hours of prayer, like the Muslims. So four o'clock knock, and four is hour of prayer, and he's in the market to show everybody. I know they joke with my prayer. So, so he say, Madam, two modules. Uh, I want module of uh, Gary. Uh -huh. uh, put them in. Uh, eh? Madam, hold on. It's four o'clock. Hold on. I don't, I, don't, I don't joke with my prayer. Hold on. Father Lord, I thank you for our father Abraham. Thank you for Moses. Thank you for David. Oh, how shall I forget Nehemiah? Oh, our father. The Bible says they make long prayer. The woman selling Gary is in trouble. At four o'clock she is selling. And if she dare try to pray, she will pray for two minutes. This man for 25, he is still praying. The woman go come tired. And she dare not sell to another customer. During the hour of prayer, guilt, when he is now done, Thank you because you have heard. I will see you at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Read your Bible. That's what the Bible said they do. They like things of outward appearance. So Jesus said, judgment be upon you. For practicing tithing because it makes you look good. What are you for practicing tithing because it makes you look righteous? How is that a support for tithing? He was rebuking them for doing something that is of false glory. But somebody would say, okay, but Jesus didn't say they shouldn't have done it. At least Jesus said they ought to have done it. I think you have a point. Michael. Bright. I think the person has a point. Ah, Pastor, at least Jesus didn't say they shouldn't have. He said they ought to have done it. Which means we also ought to have done it. Thinking about it now, maybe I should revise my doctrine. What do you think? The answer is absolutely no. We're not reversing anything. You need to understand what, why Jesus said this you ought to have done. And that's where I'm going to close today. When Jesus said this you ought to have done, he was talking to people who are already looking for how to catch him. Say you know. Yes. Say Let's trick him with this question. So we will not say, and they always go in a group because in Israel you need minimum of two or three. But they would want to have three witnesses. We heard him say, we should stop tight. Then it, it, it's, it's, Jesus is going to be crucified for a right reason. Then his blood will not be able to atone. Are you getting it now? You must crucify Jesus for false reason. You, can't, you must not have a ground to crucify Jesus. The thieves that were crucified, it's justified. Why? They, they stole. But Jesus did nothing. Even the man, they took him to say, I wash my hand. I have not found any offense committed by this man. But if he had said, you don't need to die. They will use it against him. Am I making sense? Now, second reason. This ye ought to have done. Why would he tell them not to do it? That is the covenant they have. They have an old covenant. And he did not come to say to them, stop this covenant. They will also arrest him for saying, abolish this covenant. Are you following what I'm saying? So, of course, he will say to them, practice what the law says and practice it well. Yeah. 
Shall I say to you something? Did you know that Jesus practiced the law? Why are you looking at me like that? Jesus himself, the author of new covenant, practiced the law. So if you are going to ask us to practice tithing, because Jesus said, this you ought to have done, then we should practice the entire law, because Jesus himself practiced the law. Jesus did many things for righteousness sake, including baptism. Suffer so it to be so. Eh? You baptize. <coughs> Am I mad? Baptize you. Say, don't worry. What is he trying to say? You are right. That's the meaning. Say, you are right. I ought not to be baptized, but suffer it to be so. Jesus did many things for the sake of fulfilling all righteousness. We are under the covenant of media. Find me the scripture. Romans. The Bible says that Jesus born under the law. Let me find it. If you find it before me, kudos to you. you get some dollars. So whoever finds it first. They found it? Galatians what? Four? Really? Is in Galatians, not Romans? I think my wife is right. Ah, madam is right. Eh? I, I go come fear. Is it, is it not just 500 Naira? <laughs> make, make I give you now. I said you will chop dollar. Yeah. Dollar is dollar. Oh, I said dollars. Ah, okay, it has to be more than one. Okay, 1,000 Naira. She? It has become dollars. Mama chop, mama chop dollars. Hey, this is the way you know they laugh. Now only here you go laugh. When we get home now, she would define meaning of dollars for me. <laughs> All of you, they laugh at my joke, say it's only two. Let's reach. If I know, if you know, reach ten dollars, I, I never. Me, I know which I don't enter. <laughs> but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law. Jesus was born under the law, practiced the law before he brings in the new covenant. You don't expect him to come. He has not died. So the old covenant has not ceased. And he will now tell you, you shouldn't have paid tight. Of course, the law that was established says pay tight. The law that was established demanded they do many things and Jesus did not one time tell them, don't do it. He never mentioned one law. Say, this you don't need to do. So Jesus, watch this now, man of God. Jesus, yes, you may say, approve tithing because he didn't condemn it. Tell me which Old Testament law he condemned. None. So it means if you want to use that statement as a ground of us being under obligation to tithe, we are under, under, under obligation to do everything Jesus didn't condemn. You say he didn't condemn tithing. He said this you ought to have done. Let me show you something else he did. And I think we'll close there. I, I, I want to read Exodus 12, verse 14. Let me show you. I want to prove to you Jesus practiced the law. Jesus practiced the law. Yet, we are not under the law. We are just the one going to pick one of the law that he didn't speak against and said, 
So the Bible says in verse 14, so this day shall be to you a memorial. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it as a feast by everlasting ordinance. Verse 15. If I just, just go to verse 17 so that we, we, we save time. So you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread for this day I, I will have brought the armies of I will, I, will, I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generation as an everlasting. Let's read 15 and 16. There's something I want to show you. I'm looking for a particular word. Feast of unleavened bread mentioned here. Verse 15. Media. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove the unleavened from your house. So on and so on and so on. Verse 16. Hallelujah. Verse 16. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation and on the seventh day there shall be holy convocation no no manner of war shall be done on them but that which everyone must eat that only may be prepared by you praise the lord now you see that now go to verse 21 i think it's 21 or 22 Okay, then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take a lamb for yourself according to your family and kill the Passover lamb. So that seven days is the Passover. Did Jesus observe Passover or not? He did. He did? Go and set up the upper room. Why? That I may observe the Passover. That's where Jesus ate Passover. So Jesus observed the Passover. He not only supported it, he observed it. Why are we not doing it? Jesus said, this ought, you ought to have done. So we, we pick that one. Why are these men of God not celebrating Passover? It's a question. It's clever, isn't it? We pick only the one that makes us rich. Passover, we will gain nothing. So we men of God, we will not bring that as, as Jesus observed Passover, let us observe. Amen. I'm trying to prove to you that Jesus supporting and say this ye ought to have done. He was talking to people under the law because he too was under the law and he will dare not speak against that law while the new covenant has not been established. He will not. He cannot. He will be sinning to say to them, break. And he cannot and he did not say to them to break any. Do you know he never said they should ignore any. The only thing he did was to tell them, this is what the law means. This is how you're doing it. This is how you ought to do it. He wasn't establishing the law in that sense. He was saying, you want to prove you are holy? Do everything. You want to stop impressing members of your temple that you are holy? Do everything. When they see you, practice the law. When they don't see you, practice the law. That's all Jesus was saying. We, we have to close. We have to close. But I want to say this because it would not be right not to say it. Acts chapter 18 verse 3.
If you didn't gain anything from today's message, please gain this one. Acts 18.3. So, because Paul was of the same trade, he stayed with them and walked. For by occupation, they were tent makers. Paul came to a town, discovered some Jews, and he discovered these Jews are tent makers. And the Bible said, because they were of the same trade, he stayed with them. He didn't say, I'm a man of God. And ate their food free. Read it. He stayed with them and walked. For by occupation, they were all tent makers. I want to close by saying, why have you never seen a man of God used this to preach. But we go as far as Malachi. Looking for what is not lost. To prove you are robbing God. No. They will not use this to preach. Because you will say to them, man of God. Paul looked for what to do and walked. Man of God, why are you not walking? They can't. They dare not bring this up. Rather, they will preach the one that makes them buy flashy cars. The one that enables them to buy private jets. They will not preach. Paul walked. Is it not Bible? Is it not New Testament? So we have to go and borrow from Genesis chapter 14. We have to go and borrow from Nehemiah chapter 10. We have to go and borrow from Malachi. To say you are robbing God. We have to go and borrow. But we will not say. Acts 18.3. Paul walked. He said I don't want to be a burden to anybody. The Bible says you are your brother's keeper. Why are, you, why are you not helping your members take it easy on them? Say, ah, this congregation is too small to look after me. Walk. And when the work becomes big, that you will not... I told mama, I said, my, my work is disturbing this work. My own work is disturbing this work. A time will come, your work will disturb the work of God. So you have to let one go for the other. But guess what? The man who preached more than they all walked. So I still said to myself, if Paul did it, I can do it. He said, we labor night and day. During the day, he preached the gospel. At night, he built tent. Say, ma 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 madam, your, your tent will be ready tomorrow. And I don't want to disappoint madam. I say your tent will be ready tomorrow. Immediately you leave. He continues the preaching. Uh -huh. What was your question? Then he was dissecting scriptures during the day. But he has promised madam. He will get his tent tomorrow. Night comes. He built tent. Madam comes. Meet tent. We labor night and day. Nobody will preach that. No man of God wants to use that as an example. But we will go to borrow and make people feel guilty that they are robbing God. Which means there is a law or a covenant you are breaking if you don't tie. Why would you do that? It makes the church rich. And what does that translate to? You can buy flashy car. You can buy a 2015 Range Rover. How much was it? 34 million. I saw it yesterday. It looks beautiful. I saw a man say, whoa, I like your car. He said, thank you. I said, is it for sale? He said, well, if somebody gives me money, I'll sell it. Then I said to his friend, how much is that car worth? He said, oh, it's a 2015 Range Rover. 
34 million. Now I change conversation. Now, that would be foolishness. I change conversation. Say, you know the last thing I say about the car? It looks good. Because it does. I'm not lying. But me, I remove myself. But I, if I'm a greedy person, I will preach messages that makes you feel bad. Say the house of God lies in ruin. The widows are suffering. Uh, equipment need upgrade. I will say all of that so that you will bring. When you bring, we will do small upgrade, as they say, as they do in political party. They will tie one street in the whole community and launch it with three television stations. One street. Make all the noise like Pharisees and cut ribbon. And that, that street will last for one year because it's the poorest quality. So that's what men of God will do. You will bring all the money. They will do one small upgrade. Maybe buy uh, 20,000 naira paint and repaint this wall. We are upgrading. Keep on, keep on, keep on supporting the work of the Lord. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. God bless you as you do it. The Lord will open the windows of heaven for you. He will rebuke the vara for your sake. Keep on doing it. And then they buy a Range Rover, 34 million. Keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Tell them in the branch at Akure. Tell them in the branch at Oweri that they should send all money. We're doing major projects at the headquarters. Send it. Send it. Send it. Tell them that all the first fruits should be sent directly to headquarters. Michael, I'm telling you the truth. I have a tape to prove it that a man of God, big man of God, said, Tell them all the first fruits should not be dropped at the branches. I'm not lying. Why are you laughing? They said it. Tell them to not drop all the first fruit at the branches. It should be sent to headquarters. We are doing major projects. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. And then they buy private jet. It's a major project. Is it not major? Do you know what you are creating? You are creating a lot of false prophets. Because people will say, money day gospel. All that attitude produces fake men of God. Muna, money day gospel. Somebody approached your honorable media chief. Chisom. Two of us, Chisom. They approach him. Say, you, you are a pastor. You've been in church for long. You should be in ministry by now. Money day gospel. Two of us. Did they hear? Now you tell me by a mouth. So nobody said them say, and they here alive. So I'm not quoting somebody dead. Say so you, you are a man of God. You've gone through every training. You should, should be in ministry by now. Money day gospel. And you know what he said to me? I like his honesty. He said, Ah, but Pastor, if to say I enter ministry, <laughs> I won't preach this your kind of doctrine. You know. <laughs> the money don't go come. Oh. <laughs> He's being honest. Jesus, true of us. Uh -huh. He was being honest. If I enter ministry, I can't preach your this your type. I, I, I have to preach the one that brings the dollar. So that shows you why what they are doing is raising. You are raising thieves. You are raising robbers in suit. And they are everywhere. And they, then, then they go and you... Uh, try. See, brother, I, I really don't know you much. But if I begin to tell you your sister's name and your brother's name, you begin to respect me. True or false? But do you know if you go to uh, these people who, who read palms, they will tell you your sister's name. They will tell you your brother's name. And they have never seen you before. So that I tell you your sister's name and brother's name does not make it that I'm using power of God. So a lot of people will now use the same. Like we heard on that message, me and Mama listened to, there are priests said, there are many ways into the supernatural. Many ways to enter the supernatural and see. It's not only one way. Jesus is the only 
pure way. Yes. That's the meaning when you say, I am the way. When you say, I am the way. He didn't say, I am the only way. If anyone enters by me, which means that you may enter through another way. Jesus never said, I'm the only way. He said, I am the, the way, the pure way. You can access the supernatural through occult. You can access the supernatural through meditation. Yes, yoga. You can access the supernatural through astrology, sign readings. So I can go and learn from astrologers how to peep into your future. But I have only entered the supernatural through the wrong window. And if you dare follow me, you are in trouble. I will chop all your dollars and your naira. Because I didn't go as a man of God to learn occultic something. To now come and preach you correct doctrine. Somebody leave the truth and go and take risk. Somebody leave the power of the Holy Ghost. Because Holy Ghost is not... Let me tell you something about Holy Spirit. Is We close now. Because I can keep on. I talk too much. But let me say this about Holy Spirit. He is not given to you to glorify you. But you hear people say, if I be a man of God, you are glorifying yourself. Anybody that says, if I be a man of God, he has confidence in something. Yes. But if it's only because he has confidence in it, he can't say that. Why? He was not given to make you look good. He was given. The Bible says, Jesus himself said, it, he will glorify me. He will glorify me. Not you. So, Holy Ghost will not give you the kind of opportunity to look like you have personal power. That's why the Bible records, and God did unusual miracles through Paul. Who was doing the miracle? God. This day, this age, 2021, who is doing miracle? Men of God. Rise up to your feet. Honestly speaking, if you ask me what me say if I preach, I don't know. So if they ask you, what did you learn in church today, and you don't know, I won't blame you. Thank you for listening to Pastor Israel of Quorum Assembly, Abuja. Place your order for messages, books, DVDs, magazines, and other resource materials. For more information, Call us on 081-6288-6914 or 080-9533-2344 and visit us on all social media handles Facebook at Korem Assembly Abuja Instagram at Korem Abuja For YouTube, Korem Abuja Korem Assembly, a place where God is raising heaven-bound prosperous people Thank you and God bless you